So the first program here is shorter. I'll go over that. If you want to step out for a couple minutes and take a break after that, that's fine. Then I'll go over the other one. All right, you've done this random number program, I believe at least, in other languages. There are multiple ways that it can be done. This is just the way I decided to do it. All right, so I use the J option pane. So you can see that that is an import right there. Just call the class what it was, guessing game. Here are my class constants. The min is, a, is 1, the max is 100. These were just the messages. That, you know, that's why, you know, so either uh, guess must be from 1 to 100, too high, try again, too low, try again, or you guess the secret number. I also created some class variables. You know, and I appreciate the questions when you were going through this. I guess what I'll try to do. The problem is if, if I put too many restrictions on a test and say you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this, then after a while everyone starts looking alike and I, it's not what I want. All right, I want you to have some, some liberties, but at the same time there are things you should be able to do. By now you should realize that in certain programs if, if you're only going to use a variable in one method out of ten methods, there's no reason to make that method global. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. But if you're going to use it, let's say, in 5 out of 10, I could see making it global rather than passing it back and forth. There's no magical number when something goes from being local to being global. All right, so here was main. I put it into a loop so I can do it over and over again. And again, it should be pretty obvious what I'm doing here. First, I'm calling clear globals. Well, what's clear globals doing? Well, it's right here. Taking those global variables... The number of guesses that I had, the status, etc. It's taking all that stuff and it is setting it back to default values. All right, that's all it's doing. Now again, you could make a case and say, how come, how come you got, you know, you wrote a, a method? It's so small. There's really nothing in it. Yeah, I'm not going to deny that. But you, you, what you're going to see, starting, I guess, on Friday, on tomorrow is when we go over chapter 6, tomorrow we're going we're gonna to do this from scratch. We're going to write an employee class or a payroll class from scratch. No copying, no anything for me, for you, for none of us. All right, and when we get done with that, then what we will look at is creating an array and then an array list of employee objects. All right, and then we'll see some other things, some more advanced things that you're able to do with object orientation. So that's what's coming up next week. All right. So after you clear the globals, you call generate random number. That should be pretty simple too. That's it. I can never remember because every programming language is a little bit different. But with this one, if you look up on the screen here, if we just put in this, we wouldn't get a whole number. Remember that a random number gives you a number between 0 and less than 1. So you could get like 0.83756. If you multiply that by 100, you know, it would be 83, etc., 0.756. Using int will make sure that it's just a whole number. All right, so again, this will take and clear out all of our global variables, and this will generate the new random number. Then I put another while loop in here. So I've just generated the number. And while you haven't guessed it, make a guess and display the status. That should be pretty self-evident as far as what's going on there, just based on the names of the different, uh, of the different methods. So what's make a guess? Well, you can see it's longer. But we come in here and... I've got the current guess as a string, et cetera, so I tell you to come in here, please guess a number between 1 and 100. All right, that goes into the input string, and then I go and parse it into a number. If it's less than a minimum or greater than the maximum, we tell you that it's an out-of-range guess. I, if you happen to put in 1,000, I don't count that as, a, as a, a guess. I only count valid guesses 
All right, I only count valid guesses as things between 1 and 100. Does that make sense? That's what I consider to be a valid guess. Now, I could have written this in a different way, but didn't. What if I guess 7? All right, and let's say the number is 31, so I guess 7. It says too low, try again. What if I guess 7 again? I could have actually checked to see if I already guessed that number, and if I did, not count it as another guess, but I didn't do that either. That would be much easier to do if we put the numbers that we guessed into an array, but we're not using an array yet. All right. So if we get down to here, they've made a valid guess, valid meaning it's between 1 and 100. So if it's less than the random number, status is low. Remember that low is up here. It'll say too low, try again. Otherwise, if it's greater than the random number, the status will be high, meaning it will say too high, try again. And if it's not too low, and if it's not too high, the status will be okay, which means we'll say you guessed the, the secret number. Now, it really and truly wouldn't matter which of these two you put first. It really wouldn't because you don't know which one it's going to be. Can somebody tell me in very simple English why you wouldn't want that checked first? Isn't there only a 1 in 100 chance that you're going to guess the right number? Meaning there's a 99% chance you're going to guess the wrong number. All right? At least on your first guess. So you either should be checking for something too low here or something too high here, and then something too high here or something too low here. You're all to the point now where you should be writing sophisticated enough programs that if you're checking a bunch of things and you know that it's more than likely to be something, that's the first thing you should be checking for. And if there's a bunch of things you're checking and one of them you know should almost never happen, that should be the last thing you're checking for. That should just make sense. All right. So then we return the status, which is either going to be OK, high, or low. Then we display the status. If it's OK, you guessed it is true, and it took you number of guesses to guess the random number. I even put the random number down. OK? And then we've got the J option pane that says that. All right, but it'll only say that. Otherwise, it'll say it's too high, or else it'll say it's too low. When we're all done, ask if you want to run the program again. All right. Now, there are, there are some programs like this that you write where people might want to create and, and look at statistics. You know, I, we, we could have actually written this that every time you generated a number, a random number, we could have put that number into an array or done something and figured out we could have run the program a million times and found out what number came up the most often. You know what I'm saying? We could have done things like that. That was not what this was designed to do. So if I come in here and run this, 50 is always a good place to start. It's too high, try again. 25, it's too high, try again. 13, too low, try again. 20, too high, try again. 16, 55 guesses. Do I want to try it again? Yes. New number. Remember the last one was whatever, 16 or whatever. Too high. Now, if I put in 16 and it was that number, in other words, if I kept running it and it kept giving me the same number, I'd want to go in and take a look at my logic because something would be hosed. Maybe I wasn't seeding the RAND. I don't know. So that's still too high, so let's try half of that, which would be 8. That's too low. How about 12? All right, took me four guesses. I'm surprised. Usually when I do this, there you go, too low. You usually get a pretty good amount that are greater than 50 and less than 50. I don't think I've ever guessed 50 for the first number and had it be 50 in my life. And I probably have played this hundreds of times over the different languages that we've learned.
So that's it. Questions on that one? Anything that I did that you didn't understand? It's not a super long program. All right, then let me put up the next one. And again, this game, as you all know, could be done in so many different ways. The good news, like it or not like it, you might want to keep this hard copy. We're going to build this as an Android app. And when we do, we're going to add, I've done this before, I just think it's, it's so stupid, it's kind of cool, that um, we're going to add a GIF, and it's going to be an animated GIF. So as you're playing the game, you're going to keep seeing this, two people who are going to be playing the game. All right, you know, you're like, you're like, see, yeah, or whatever, and it'll just keep going. I thought that was kind of cool. All right, you may or may not when you when you look at it, but you could always put your own graphic in there too. All right, and these gifs are actually animated gifs. You'll see that when we get to that point. All right, so there was the directions. Again, this could have been done so many different ways. Colin and asked the question. Yeah, you want a random number? You import java.util.random. All right, I did this. You know, Brady, you asked the question before. I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to use J option paint. I can't, I can't think of a situation if you were a professional programmer, no matter what you were doing, where it would be advantageous to be putting something in from a command line like, line like that. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just can't think of one. But to me, it makes more sense to do it that way. So I've got, I made these. Uh, global variables, probably didn't have to, but I guess by that time I was too lazy to think about passing stuff around. So I have user wins, computer wins, and ties. Now, you'll notice if you look there, I didn't put any comments. I'm to the point where <clears throat> it's, it's funny, with you guys last semester, sometimes people commented like crazy. Some of you very rarely comment. This semester we're commenting, and they're, they're like, no, don't go, don't, 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 don't go off that page yet. It's a freaking comment. And I'm telling them, type whatever you want to type in there. No, no, I want to see what you have. Okay. But I think user wins, computer wins, and ties, the names are pretty indicative of what they're doing. I don't even know if those need comments is what I'm saying. All right, so here's main. See that I've got four different variables in main, computer, user. It's pretty obvious what those are. Again, so I can play the game multiple times. And status. All right, here's the problem when you say too low, too high, or correct. That has absolutely nothing to do with uh, rock, paper, scissors, but the problem with that is I copied that over from the other program. So that's why that's there. All right, so here we go. Computer equal computer choice. Does everybody realize you should have the computer pick first? And then you should pick. And when the or if you if you pick first, that's fine, and then the computer pick. But doing it this way too, you shouldn't show what the computer picked, because otherwise you'd win every time, and that'd be kind of dumb too. If you've seen that commercial on TV, it's for some coffee creamer product. When the thing is like he's like a, a little gingerbread man, and the and they do rock paper scissors, and the guy loses to the gingerbread man, and he's like. Oh, and he goes, he goes, you know, I can only do paper, right? Because he doesn't have fingers. All right, so we do the computer's choice, then we do the user's choice, then we determine the winner, and then we ask them if they want to do it again. Just for the heck of it, I put this in a do while loop. There's a lot of ways it could be done. When we're all done, I print the final totals, and I exit. I did put some Java doc comments in here. Not that it's a big thing one way or the other. All right. Pretty obvious, I think, what's going on here. This is the computer choice. So we are, again, doing a random number, but this is a random number between 1 and 3. There's different ways that you can do a random number. This one I just decided to use the next int. All right. But there's plenty of different ways that you can do this. So this should generate a 1, a 2, or a 3. And then what I did was I said, okay, if it's a 1, remember, what you're figuring out here is your choice. So if it's a 1, what I'm saying is your choice was a rock. 
a two-year choice was paper, all right? It should never be anything but a one, two, or three, but just in case, I just defaulted it to scissors, all right? And then I return the choice. Then I do a similar type of thing here, but since it's not the computer, I tell you in an option pane show info dialog, enter rock, paper, or scissors, all right? And while it's not valid, so if you put in something other than rock or paper or scissors or you misspell one of them or whatever, if you do that, what's going to happen is it's just going to ask you to do it again. That's all. All right, and then we return the choice. So by the time we return this, it should be rock or paper or scissors. Okay? I check the validity right here, is valid choice, and that's down here. And I tell you that if it's rock, paper, or scissors, just break. And when you break, that's going to return true. Otherwise, you're going to return false. Again, there's a lot of different ways this could conceivably have been done. as far as who won, the computer's choice was, the user's choice was, put that in there. And why did I use the equals ignore case? Well, yeah, because it ignores the case, because we don't know. We tell them to put in rock and lower case. We don't know if they're going to do that. All right. So rock smashes scissors, paper wraps rock. The game is tied. Scissors cuts paper. Paper wraps. I don't know if that's right. Is it paper wraps rock? Do they assume the paper wraps rock? I don't remember. The game is tied. Rock smashes scissors. Scissors cuts paper. The game is tied. And you just print the results. And then finally, for the final totals, the deck. So if I run this. Computer one, there's a tie, I won. So if I stop right now, everybody won one. It appears at least as though it's working. All right. I wrote it, ran it a few times. I, far, as far as I could tell, it looked okay. Any questions on any of that? All right. So, yeah, Friday you will take the test. What I will do on Friday, again, as we did last semester, I'm expecting you to have those first three payroll programs that we did done. Does that make sense? The ones we did as a class. That's, those are worth 25 points collectively. That means if you did them and they run, you get 25 points. All right. The test then that we will take on Friday will be worth 100 points. As always, we'll make sure that we drop the lowest grade that you have. That helped a couple of you and bumped your grade up when I did that. All right. Any questions on either one of these programs? The, the, the test that you take on Friday will, you know, as you probably would guess, it's on one, two, three, four, and five. It'll be the easiest test out of all of them. All right? It's, it, I'm not sure yet because I've written two of them. I'm still not sure which one I want to use. But the, the point is, I do have fairly specific instructions on stuff you should do. But there's no real object orientation in it. You're not building a class where you're going to create objects out of those classes. That's what we're going to start doing then tomorrow. So when you, you know, I'm not, I mean, we still have an hour of class, but um, tomorrow when you come in, please just start up IntelliJ IDEA, and we're going to start up a new project. You don't have to name it. You don't have to do anything. Unless, if you want to, you, we can do this. You can do this right now. If you have been coming in and creating these, all right, there's where I made the guessing game, and there's where, you know, et cetera. All right. 
then we can come in here we can add one new thing why don't we I'm just gonna call this payroll OOP O O O P one this is the first time we're doing something that I consider to be really object oriented all right and what I'm gonna do tomorrow is I, I don't know how long it'll take to go over that example so we will go over chapter six in these PowerPoints and then and then we will actually go over and, and write this payroll program now how long is that going to take I don't know sometimes when I think we're done it will be done by three we're done at two Sometimes when I think we'll be done at 3, we're barely done at 4.30. So I don't know. If I have time tonight, I'll write another object-oriented program so you can see another one that's, that's not with payroll objects. We'll do something else. All right? Questions? So you might, if you want to do that, you can make another folder in there. Just call it something like payroll oop one We're going to have at least four of those. All right? So if you want, you can make your payroll oop one your payroll oop 2 Payroll loop three and payroll loop four if you want to do that. If you don't, that's fine too.